everyone here has a habit which is developed over time and it is often it is often influenced by the people around you so a habit could be anything which you do on a daily basis any day to day activity let's say you wake up at 6 and then you go for a jog at 7 then you come back and then you have your breakfast now that would be a habit because you're doing that on a regular basis now may i ask how many here have ridden a bicycle may i have a show of hand please fantastic now keep your hands raised if you have ridden a geared bicycle great amazing so you might have noticed on instagram that there is a lot of motivational posts not just instagram all the social media platforms so all this motivational post says something in common about disruption to have disruption in your life now what is disruption now while i was experimenting and going through all this uh, motivational course to uh, post and i realized that it's not about disruption but it's rather about having disruptive mindset because people often ignore the small problems in the society or in your day to day activities and then they focus more on the bigger problems they say it's not a big deal so why do we look at the small problem in the first place so it's more about disruptive mindset good afternoon everyone i'm emmanuel and i would like to share my experience with disruptive mindset first of all to understand disruptive mindset we need to know what is disruption disruption according to google or any dictionary just means that to have interference to have interruption or just a disturbance in cycle a habit is more like a chain in the bicycle so a routine could or uh, this it could be represented by a chain in a bicycle so every time you go up a gear or down a gear depends on your habits so let's say you do something more productive so doing something productive would mean that you're going up a gear which means it's very harder to pedal but at the same time you're going faster on the flip side if you're doing something less productive you're going down a gear which means it's easier to pedal but at the same time it's a lower pace so during the pandemic for me it was a endless cycle of online classes and then eating gaming and sleeping there was nothing much productive so i decided let's do something more productive i wanted to go up a gear so i decided to make some youtube videos so as i was recording a lot of videos there was tons of video files in my computer it was very unorganized like very much so it was so hard for me to edit all those videos what would someone with this disruptive mindset think this is not a good thing you can't accept this as a way of life but over the few years as people have been recording a lot of videos it was very clear that they have been avoiding this just because it's a small problem definitely it's not a huge problem and there is a alternate solution like you can do all the hard work but with this disruptive mindset you're likely going to encounter this problem and you would want to solve it so me and my friend came up with the solution to automatically reorganize all the files every time i record it so we built a tool which will automatically organize the files the way i want it and that made it a lot easier in my youtube career now this disruptive mindset people might say it's not for everyone it's not my cup of tea but i'll give you three simple ways three simple steps with which everyone can acquire the same disruptive mindset now to understand your problems you need to understand your day to day activities do you do what you love in your day to day activities likely that's not the case because some surveys show that 45% of the people don't know what they're doing they're not sure about what they want to achieve the habits are just on the flow so step number 1 would be to align yourself with your favorite spices now that's very confusing what is favorite spices right so favorite spices here just means to do what you love 
So when you're able to align your habits with what you love, it's very much easier for you to identify any problem in your day-to-day -day activities. So for me, the favorite spice was gaming and programming. It could be anything for anyone. Now that brings me to step number two, to identify the I wish as a problem. Because more often, when you do something you love, there might be one part where you decide, I wish there's an alternate way, or this is so boring, or it's not that interesting. I wish there's an easier way to do it. You always hope or wish for that alternative path, but you would just accept it as a way of life. That is a big problem. And that's why you need to identify it as a problem and not as a wish. That brings me to step, no step number three. Now step number three says, to solve a problem by hook or by crook. Now, by hook or by crook, what does that mean? Because it simply means you have to solve the problem either by yourself or you have to ask someone to help you with it. For me, solving the problem of organizing my files was not an easy task alone. According to step number three, I had to take an external help. I had a friend to help me out with the same thing. This wouldn't be alone. This wouldn't be possible to do alone. It's not an easy task, although it's a small problem. But if you realized this is a small problem, but it solved the solution. This one solution could be used by many other, which people initially ignored was then used as a solution. Initially, if you had to go from place A to place B, you would have to go to the streets and then you have to wait for a cab or a auto. And while you're waiting, they may or may not attend your uh, request. You might be like auto or driver or taxi. They wouldn't respond. And even if they did, they may or may not accept your ride. And even if they did, the pricing would be really you know that it's not easy to bargain with them. But then with disruptive mindset, there was a solution which arised, which was Ola and Uber. They came up with this solution where the cab would be waiting for you. You just have to book it and then they would come to your location. They would pick you up and you're guaranteed to reach your destination. They would also say what time you would reach, which is a cool thing, which people didn't initially believe was possible because they didn't have the disruptive mindset to accept that as a problem in the first place. Because if you don't see a thing as a problem, you're not going to solve it. You're just going to accept it as a way of life, which is why disruption is really useful in the same place you need disruptive mindset to support disruption. With that being said, with these three simple steps, you can introduce disruptive mindset into your cells and by solving one problem in your day-to-day -day activity, you're helping many other people across the globe, not just yourself, but there are many other people who would be likely facing the same problem and you're finding a solution for all of them. So together, we can change the world with the help of disruptive mindset. Thank you.